Hey everyone, have you ever thought about remotely operating your garage door? I want to show you today how I've set mine up and uh, use it with a HomeSeer uh, Z-Wave module, an FS20Z. They sell it on the HomeSeer store. I'll have a link to it in the description below. But what you do, um, it's really simple. It's a momentary contact switch. And what I've done is I've just ran, this is some old ethernet cable. Um, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna mimic a door, bush, door button push. And what you do is basically find the wire that uh, controls your garage door button. And you'll just put another set of wires in there. And this is just temporary, but I've got mine running. And I mounted it up here. And the thing with this module is meant to be hardwired in. I just bought a plug and I'm going to zip tie it to the um, supports up there and then just tie my wires up. Um, but this is the first part. This is what will actually emulate your door button push. So um, this is good to have just like this um, if you're monitoring your garage door. But I want to show you another component that's really key if you really want to do an automated part and have this where you can remotely do it while it's unattended. The second part you're gonna want is just a door monitor. This is another Z-Wave module. And you can see in there, there's the magnetic contact and there is the, the sensor itself. And you want this with the garage door so you can tell if the door is open or closed. Um, because it, since it's just a momentary button push, if the garage door is open and you want it open, you don't want anything to happen. This is going to tell you that it's open and not do anything. And what you're going to have to do is set up some events. And the way I have mine is like an open event and a close event that only happen for the specified um, action you want to do. So let me go in and I will show you the events and how I have everything set up. So this will do it in some scenarios that you can possibly want to implement using this type of setup. All right, so here's my home sear setup. And this here is the garage door button. This is the Z-Wave device that I added. And uh, this will just get added and you can name it whatever. I just named it garage door button. The second one here, this is a virtual device and you don't have to have this. I just set it up because um, the way this works, like I said, it's a momentary contact switch. So if you turn this on, it's like holding the button down until you turn it off. And that's something you don't want to do because you think about when you open the garage door, you just push the button and it happens. And the reason I have this set up is when this turns on, it will activate this for one second and then automatically turn it back off. I have an event that I have set up that, that will actually mimic this. So if I just hit on, it will see it goes on and it immediately goes back off. And now it shows my garage door here. This is the door monitor sensor that I have. Shows that it's open. And then if I do this again, so now that it's open, I'm gonna hit the button and it goes on and off and it happens so quick it didn't have time to update it but the garage door is closing and this event or not this event but this uh, status will go to closed here once it gets fully closed um, I have that just for the sake of like I said so you don't get the um, the garage door button stuck on I've had that happen and if it stays on and then you try to do it with your car or the button, it will not work. So you want to make sure that this stays off the majority of the time. If not, it'll really cause your system to, uh, to mess up. All right, there we go. And another thing is I have this set to, to only operate after a minute of the delay. So that way it's not going off and on too much. So now I'm gonna show you how I set up the events. So now that I'm on my events page, here's my garage door events. Um, the first one I was just going to talk about is the garage door operation. 
This is the one that I have set up that virtual event that if it opens or becomes on, it will set it to on one second later, set it to off. This is just something I did. You can do it on the actual button itself. I just created a virtual device. Uh, I don't know which is easier, you know, that's your preference. I just set mine up this way because I use the virtual device actually for my open and close events. So this will just mimic a door push, um, which you can just set from your phone. Uh, my kids use it a lot because they don't like typing the, the keypad entry to get in. So now they have the Home Seer app on their phone and they just hit the button and open and close. Now, uh, another important event, let's say you have, uh, my, like my prior video, IFTT set up for proximity and you're coming home and you want to open the door for when you come home so the door is ready for you when you get here. This is where you need both the door operation module, the Z-Wave module, and the door sensor. Um, if not, uh, since it, your garage, unless you have a new garage door and it, you can get the values into HomeSeer that tells you whether it's opened or closed, you have to know that status. If not, you'll just be blindly opening or closing the door. Because if the garage door is open and you come home, now it's going to close, so you're going to have to turn around and open it back up. So what I've done is I've just created two events. I've get, created a closed event and an open event. And um, they work the same except just, you know, checking the door status. So for this one, let's say we want to open the garage door. Well, we only want this to work if the garage is closed. Because if it's open, we're going to leave it open. We don't want it to, 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 to fire. So first we want to check the door, make sure it's been closed for at least a minute. I always put that value in there just to keep it, if something were to go wrong, it doesn't, and you do it twice, it doesn't get the door kind of in a jam state. So I let it, that way it's closed all the way. So if you trigger this and it's closed, then we're just going to set this device to on. And we know that since this automatically triggers on and off, we don't have to turn around and turn it off. You can use your actual device in here and turn it on and then a second later turn it off. You just want to make sure that that garage door module goes back to an off status. It will give you trouble. I had that uh, for some reason. It wouldn't go off back in the off status and it would just mess everything up and my wife would be complaining because the garage door wouldn't open for her when she got home. So always check and make sure it goes back off. Um, and the second for the garage closed, same thing. You just want to make sure that the garage has been closed. And if it is, activate the door uh, open switch again. And that's it for controlling your garage door. And people say that you really shouldn't be opening and closing the garage door unless you're physically there to watch it. Um, because if someone's in the door and your, your uh, sensor is broken, it could close the garage on something. Or, you know, who knows? Um, I do have a camera set up in my garage that I can watch uh, because there have been times when my door sensor has failed to trigger and I'll get an alert that my garage door is open and we're away from home. And I pull up my cameras and I can see that the garage door is closed or open. Uh, so it's just a quick visual way, you know, just if you do want to monitor it, you're you know, one of these that are sensitive before you open or close this when you're not at home you can pull up the camera and watch it as it's closing or opening so anyway well i hope you enjoyed this quick video here on garage door operations uh, if you have any comments or questions drop them in the uh, comment section below if you have any topics you want me to cover in future videos please let me know and give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe bell so you'll get notified when i put out new videos and i look forward to you coming back thanks and have a great day